Programs normally presented at this time will not be seen today. In order to bring you the following program from CBS Sports. The 41st Annual Sun Bowl from historic El Paso, Texas, where today the University of Pittsburgh goes against Kansas University. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Horning along with former Bear great Johnny Morris awaiting what should be a great offensive matchup. Johnny, these two teams really should put some points on the board. Well, I'll tell you, Paul, I think we have the best bowl game of the holidays. We have two young, exciting teams. Both teams finished with records of seven and four. So there were obviously high points and low points, but mostly high points for the University of Pittsburgh. Upsets over Notre Dame and bowl-bound Georgia, while the University of Kansas came up with the upset of the year, beating Oklahoma 23-3. to So these teams can do it all, Paul, and I'm expecting a great game. Johnny, I watched the Pittsburgh-Notre Dame game, and it was all Tony Garza. 303 yards rushing, an all-time record against Notre Dame. He also caught two passes for 74 yards, and what I feel was one of the greatest college performances of all time. T.D. Dorsett, they call him. He scored 38 career touchdowns. He's rushed for 1,544 yards this year. In fact, he's the first legitimate freshman All-American in 29 years. A three-time All-American. He's rushed for over 1,000 yards in all three of his seasons here at Pittsburgh. Fourth in the Heisman voting. This is the guy that Kansas defense are going to see, is going to see a lot of today, and they must stop this man. Touchdown, Tony Dorsett. Over on the other side of the coin, we have the University of Kansas offense, and that offense is led by number nine, Nolan Cromwell, and he is an amazing story. Two years as a defensive halfback, this year not until the third game did he come in at quarterback, wound up rushing for 1,124 yards, which is the third best in NCAA history by a quarterback. He also led the Big Eight in rushing. Nolan Cromwell... He's going to lead that wishbone attack for Kansas, and if Kansas is supposed to have good luck today, it's got to be from the wishbone. Number nine, Nolan Cromwell. We'll be right back with a look at old El Paso and a visit with the king of El Paso in just a moment. A new spirit is growing in America called Free Spirit, and with it has come a new breed of Buick. Buick Skyhawk, Skylark, and the new Century. Buicks that are trim, light, aerodynamic, and V6 powered. And now that thousands of Americans are taking a second look at the kind of car they drive, well, maybe you ought to take a second look at Buick. Buick, dedicated to the Free Spirit in just about everyone. This is Big Jim Naraki. His tummy's upset with acid indigestion. Heartburn. Guess. If you had to give him something and stay there till it worked, what would you give him? I'd give him Tums. Tums is strong medicine. Taken as directed, Tums starts working in seconds. Tums. If it'll work for Big Jim, imagine what it'll do for you. It worked. He feels better. I feel better. Tums. For the tummy. And that's a tummy. As the nation closes in on its bicentennial year, El Paso, built around the southernmost chain of the Rocky Mountains, looks back on a sparkling and special history. From the Spanish missionaries and conquistadors of the 16th century through the legendary lawmen and lawbreakers of the 19th, El Paso wrote its own dramas before the advent of the army and the railroads curbed the frontier spree. But today, the eyes of Texas face forward from a community which still boasts of its cattle country and cotton heritage, but adds to those specialties manufacturing, petroleum, and the missile guardians of Fort Bliss. The arts are not forgotten here, nor is contemporary architecture. And heading the educational facilities is the University of Texas at El Paso, UTEP, whose home stadium is the storied Sun Bowl. This gentleman, I think, needs no introduction to the people in the United States, especially if you're a golf fan. The great Lee Trevino, who makes his home here in El Paso. Lee, 
You're a big football fan. How long have you been watching this game? Well, I tell you, Paul, I've been living here about eight years, and I've been here every year. And I tell you, the matchup today is going to be absolutely super. And like we were talking a little bit earlier, uh, Kansas uh, had the big upset against Oklahoma, and, and I think they're a fantastic team. I, I don't know, really know too much about both teams, but I think that the loyalty of El Paso and the El Paso fans are kind of leaning a little bit towards uh, Pitt simply because of Johnny Majors. They like Johnny Majors, but both coaches are fantastic, and I think they're going to have a great day out here today. How's your golf game? Well, right now I'm still playing right-handed, Johnny, but uh, I don't know. Uh, we're getting ready again for next year, and uh, uh, we're going to uh, Phoenix, as you know. It's the second stop on the tour, which CBS will be televising, and we're starting to name that the Johnny Miller Open, so uh, we hope that everybody will be watching that. i tell you one thing. Uh, we've had a lot of fun here in El Paso. The hospitality has been fantastic, and I tell you, and you go to Juarez with this young man right here. <laughs> Everything is on the house. They take care of you around here, don't I they? I tell you, we have a lot of fun, and that's what I've been trying to tell people all over the country, that this is one of the reasons that I moved to El Paso, is because it's a fantastic place. The atmosphere is fantastic. The people are just super. And when you go across that border, it's, it's just a fantastic place over there. And, Paul, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and you all come back soon. Thank you very much, Lee. Now let's go down to the field for the National Anthem. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. people think I'm a real monster, but actually I'm quite sensitive. That's why I drink light beer from Miller. It tastes great, but what I really like is it's less filling. And light's got one third less calories than their regular beer. I can't afford to get filled up. I'm too sensitive. Okay, Mr. Sensitive, you're up. <laughs> Well, Deborah, everything's going to be perfect, including me. Beautiful. Hager tops are tops. And I can mix and match them with Hager slacks to create a look for peanuts. Peanuts? She loves peanuts. I forgot the peanuts. She's here. Hager slacks and tops of Easy Care and Cron Polyester for less than $40, because looking good doesn't have to cost a lot. What's for dessert, baby? Thanks, Hager. We're almost ready for the opening kickoff. The coin toss was won by Kansas. They'll be receiving to the right of your screen. And Johnny, we're going to take a look at that wishbone offense of Bud Moore, the rookie Big 8 Coach of the Year. What a job he's done for Kansas. Well, he really turned it around. Kansas was 4-7 the year before. This year, 7-4. and four. And I think the wishbone is going to be the key because they've got to make that running attack go. They do not pass. Nolan Cromwell has thrown only 49 passes all year, and that comes out to about four or five a game. 
So they could be in some trouble if the wishbone does not go. Of course, Pittsburgh will be out to try and stop that. Pittsburgh did have problems against the wishbone of Oklahoma. In fact, Johnny Major said, I'd like to see the team that, that, uh, uh, that beats Oklahoma. And later on in the year, Kansas beat Oklahoma, so he's getting his wish. He's playing Kansas today. Well, uh, they're reenacting the coin toss here at the middle of the field. Let's take a look at the officials for today's ball game. Harvey Murdoch will be your referee. Rudy Marich, the umpire. Garden Overstreet, the linesman. Paul DeStefano, the line judge. Doug Reeves, the field judge. And Jack Combs, the back judge. So we're about ready to go for the 41st annual Sun Bowl. It's a beautiful day here in El Paso. And this stadium here on the campus of UTEP, the University of Texas at El Paso. Capacity crowd, 31,000 plus. I'd say the temperature's about what, 40, 45? Oh, 45 and expect to be about 55 degrees, a perfect afternoon for football. It probably should be pointed out that it's 10 o'clock in the morning here in El Paso, uh, and you have that desert night air. There's Coach Bud Moore of the University of Kansas. What a job he's done. He was a former assistant at Alabama. He has a lot of Bear Bryant's old principles. He's the 33rd coach, Johnny, to become a head coach from the Bears coaching staff. And he is going to be a great one. People around Kansas already know what a job he's done. He's turned around from 4-7 and seven to 7-4 seven to four this year. Can't back deep for Kansas. Eric Franklin, number 24, and number 23, Bill Campfield. Carson Long, the great kicker for Pittsburgh, who virtually holds every kicking record in Pittsburgh history. He is not a soccer style kicker. He kicks, you can see with, uh, when we get a shot of that foot, he's got a heavy kicking goal. He kicks it most of the time around the end zone. So we're about ready to go. Notice a slight tilt of that football. Kickers use that to get extra height on the football. He's got a very strong leg. And he's kicking from the right hash mark as we face to the right of the screen. This field is an artificial surface and it's uh, in good shape. It's a very slick one. The ball, when it uh, hits, will make quite a few bounces, I would say, Paul. It'll be a slippery ball on the field because the field is a kind of not slippery as far as your footing is concerned, but the ball skids quite a bit. Carson Long gets the OK. So be Eric Franklin about the goal line. Good coverage. He stopped about the nine-yard line. Great coverage. The University of Pittsburgh special teams. Randy Rudersham making the stop for Pittsburgh. And Johnny, he really got down there quick. Yes, it was a kind of a high punt. It took a little while to get down, and it was short. And uh, he was down on the, on the play very quickly. And now we're going to get a chance to see Nolan Cromwell run that wishbone attack. And they won't waste time. They'll get right into it. Laverne Smith. Norris Banks and Bill Camfield, the wishbone backfield. Banks is your fullback. Here goes Cromwell on the option after the fake to the fullback. He got a few off the right side. Al Romano, All-American candidate next year, and he will be one. He's a great one. 6'3", 230 pounds. He plays the nose guard for Pittsburgh's defense. He made the stop. A very explosive offensive backfield. Laverne Smith, your left halfback, Banks, your fullback, and Billy Campfield, the right halfback. We'll be a lot of this this afternoon on a straight quarterback sneak. Arnie Weatherington and Al Romano on the stop for Pittsburgh. There's the defensive line for Pittsburgh. Cousins, Parrish, Romano, Holloway, and Cecil Johnson, who is starting in place of regular Ed Willimowski. He's got a knee injury this week and probably will not see action. Secondary. Wilson, Moorhead, and Third down and about three. There's the fullback. Cromwell still has it. He's got the first down. He flatters. Billy Campfield is open at the 30, and he'll go in. Billy Campfield, they ran the option beautifully with Nolan Cromwell keeping it and going into the inside. There is a flag down, Johnny. It might be a forward lateral. Well, this is why 
Nolan Cromwell is so good. They had him double teamed there, had an inside-outside man, and he has such great speed, he just turned it on and went up the field. He can run a 9-700. Now, this is what you call an alert quarterback, and he laterals, but apparently it was a forward lateral as Camfield takes it the rest of the way, but it was an exciting play, and it shows you what you can do with the wishbone. And if Kansas continues that way, we're going to be in for quite a game, and maybe Pittsburgh, too. Well, but Johnny, we said we are going to put some points on the board. That was an 82-yard run if it were allowed. So it's going to be brought back. It'll be an automatic first down because Cromwell had picked up the first down on the option before he lateraled. Let's take another look. Okay, now you can watch the P Pittsburgh defenders come across the field and try and box Cromwell in, and he makes the decision to turn up the field. They had the pitch man covered. And then right here comes the lateral, and you can see that it is a little bit forward. It was a good call by the officials. Skip Sharp checks into Kansas's backfield at right halfback position and goes in motion. First and ten. Laverne Smith behind the line of scrimmage by Randy Holloway, a loss of a couple. Both teams will probably shift around a little bit on defense. They use a lot of stunts. They go virtually with the same defense. The college defense, 5-2 with those inside linebackers for Pittsburgh, Arnie Weatherington and Tom Perko. They'll probably make most of the tackles this afternoon as they lead Pittsburgh's defense in number of tackles. Second as well. The option. The pitch. Skip Sharp. Knocked out of bounds by Arnie Weatherington. Good job. Skip Sharp. Well, that time, James Wilson, number 21, came across from his corner spot, and he had Cromwell right in the middle, but Cromwell had him in a bind one way or the other because he was responsible for the pitch man. Pick up a seven on the play, so we're going to call it third and five. Richard McAuliffe, who alternates with Waddell Smith, is in at wide receiver. Third and five. Skip Sharp goes in motion. Cromwell, flag is down to pitch back to Laverne Smith. Reverses his field. That ball, Caught by LeBron James LeBron Wilson, LeBron the defensive LeBron back. Flags LeBron all over the place. The Short of first Eugene down territory. Brown Let's Brown check out the penalty. Call home. Eugene Brown Sr. Call home. Looking for that preliminary indication. Pittsburgh has faced two wishbone teams this year. Of course, Oklahoma did a, a heck of a job against Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh stopped Army fairly well, and I was talking to Coach John. And he feels that uh, they have the system now down to stop that wishbone. And it appears that they're trying to bring two men across and put Cromwell in a bind. So far, it hasn't worked. A lot of times you'll see on the wishbone, you'll see a man come across and try and for one man right at Cromwell trying to force him to make a decision. A legal procedure against Kansas declined by Pittsburgh. So John O'Rear will punt it away. He's averaging about 36 yards a punt. John O'Rear will do the punting for Kansas. Back deep, Garden Jones and Dennis Moorhead. Garden Jones, very, very dangerous man on the punt returns. In fact, he ranked sixth in NCAA college football this year on punt returns. Good kick. The fair catch is called for. He lets it go. So it's going to be touch dead about the 37-yard line, first and 10 for the University of Pittsburgh on their first offensive charge. Johnny, Johnny Majors, the head coach of Pittsburgh, had a decision to make whether to start Matt Cavanaugh or Robert Haygood. So Bob Haygood is going to get to start here for the Pittsburgh offense. And of course, Tony Darcy will be your left halfback. The fullback will be Elliot Walker. The flankers, Garden Jones and Rodney Clark. First and 10, Pittsburgh at their own 37. Option. Robert Haygood, quick footed and can run the football. Got up to about the 40 yard line. Rich Kovacs, one of the linebackers in that Kansas 5 2, making the stop. Rick Kovacs making the stop. There's your offensive line for Pitt Garden Jones, John Houndhauser, Matt Carroll, John Pelusi, Tom Brazoza. Joel Stone and Jim Carbett, the tight end. Rodney Clark, flank to the right. Little pitch to Darcy, they love this. Got up past the 40 yard line. Pick up with a few, there is a flag down. He's 
Steve Taylor and Tom Dinkle on the stop. Preliminary indication offsides against Kansas. Talking to Robert Haygood, a junior from Youngstown, Ohio. Actually, he got the starting call this year in Pittsburgh's offense in seven games. They won five out of those sevens. Kavanaugh, quarterback the last four, and was two, two wins and two losses. Hey, good from East Point, Georgia. So they took the five yards, second and about three. Split backfield. Ross Jones to the flank to the right. Takes the walker. It is Elliott Walker on the outside. Stopped by Steve Taylor and Tom Fitch. Let's take a look from the end zone. Okay, with the fake of the Dorset, then you get a one-on-one -on -one situation out here and the back can get around and he gets the yards. Now, Elliott Walker is a guy that you're going to have to watch because there's going to be so much pressure on Tony Dorset. And Walker's a man that could live will get some yards for you. First down, Pittsburgh. At Kansas is 46. Option left. Haygood still has it. He pitches out to Dorsett. And he's pushed out of bounds close to the 40-yard line by Tom Fitch, a safety man in Kansas's defense. Well, that was a heck of a play by Haygood because John O'Rear, number 17, came across very quickly for Kansas out there. And he, and he avoided that tackle and pitched at the same time. As you see the fake into the into the fullback, and there's Dorsett trailing. Now, O'Rear, 17, comes across to make the tackle, and as he's blocked, then Haygood pitches out, watches Fitch, and they get the big yardage on it. Pick up of about three, second and seven. Haygood on his first pass. Jim Carbett makes a fine catch. Close to the 35-yard line, hit immediately by John O'Rear, the safety man, a freshman from Tarrant, Alabama. Now let's set that defense first down for Pittsburgh. Let's uh, set that defense for Kansas. Nose guard Jim Emerson, Mike Butler and Franklin King, your defensive tackles, Tom Dinkle and Harry Murphy, your defensive ends, Terry Beeson and Rick Kovach, the inside linebacker. First and 10 at the 45. A fake, they handed off to Elliott Walker. He got a few off the left side. Franklin King on the stop for Kansas. Jim Emerson also helping out from the nose guard. Pick up about two, so it's called second and eight. You know, Paul, it was quite a decision for Johnny Majors to decide on Haygood because Matt Cavanaugh played the last four games. Haygood played the first seven games, and they're really almost equal quarterbacks. Haygood's a little bit better runner, and Cavanaugh's a little bit better passer, so you might think the run's going to be prominent, and here comes the pass. A little square out intended for Rodney Clark. He was open, but it was overthrown, covered by Steve Taylor. I tell you, the Kansas defense has sure helped out the offense this year. 18 interceptions. They've recovered 19 fumbles. So that's 37 turnovers they forced. The secondary, Taylor, Lewis, O'Rear, and Fitch. Those inside linebackers, Beeson, and he's a good one. He leads this defense in tackles, Terry Beeson, a junior from Coffeyville, Kansas. Got to watch number 77, Mike Butler. Johnny, he's a fine one. Defensive tackle on the right. Third and nine. Haygood going to the air. Decides to run it. Mike Butler is right there. He slipped about the 40-yard line. Everybody covered good coverage in that secondary, Johnny. Well, it looks like Pittsburgh's not going to be afraid to throw the ball. They've thrown three or four passes already, and uh, they don't do that too much during the season. They do throw more than more than Kansas, so we're going to see maybe a little bit of a wide-open game. Loss of about seven yards on the play. Brings up fourth down, and in comes Larry Swider. Now they're going to try a field goal, Johnny. This is unbelievable. Carson <laughs> Long is going to try to be placed down about the 47. This will be a 57-yard field, field goal attempt, and it'll be sharp. It was almost long enough, though. Carson Long... Of course, a great field goal kicker. So we're still early in the first quarter here with nine minutes and 40 seconds to go. Kansas against Pittsburgh, no score.
announcing the new Delco Freedom Battery. So revolutionary, it's designed to take care of itself for as long as you're likely to own your car. You never add water. It needs virtually no service. That's why we named it Freedom. Its instant burst of starting power is available again and again. The new Delco Freedom Battery, an advanced new technology for starting today's cars, is designed to last as long as you're likely to own your car. In recent EPA tests, Buick's 1976 Century Special with a V6 engine and available automatic transmission got an estimated 25 miles per gallon in the highway test and 17 in the city test. Your mileage may vary, but 25 and 17 in a Buick, no less. That's something to think about. Buick, dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. So Carson Long field goes a little bit short, so Kansas will take over on the touchback. First and 10 of their own 20. Billy uh, Camfield is out right now. Skip Sharp, who will alternate a lot with him this afternoon, is in at one of the running backs. Laverne Smith, keep your eye on him. He can fly. You're going to have to keep your eye on that football, too, Johnny. There's a fumble. Looked like he was trying to hand off the Norris Banks. A uh, fumble, but the whistle had blown it dead. Kansas retains possession. Arnie Weatherington on the stop. And Randy Cousins, number 84, had something to do with that. Watch the right side of your screen as 84 comes across and just gets a hit there on Cromwell to kind of disturb the handoff. And uh, the play was a bust. They were lucky that they still maintain the ball. I tell you, this wishbone is tricky. And at times this afternoon, no doubt it will not only fool us in the booth, but the cameraman. Nolan Cromwell is tricky. Second and about nine, a fumble on the snap, flags all over the place. I think maybe Pittsburgh might have been off sides on that play, Paul. Let's check the penalty out. You're exactly right, Johnny. So it's going to cost that pit defense five yards. I think Al Romano jumped a little bit too soon. The nose guard right there over the center. You see him, boom, there he goes. Made and contact. That's a no-no, right? That is a no-no. <laughs> so it's going to bring up second and three situation for the wishbone offense of Bud Moore. Boy, what a job he's done. Seven and four this year. The upset of Kansas. Big eight coach of the year. He There's the pullback. He that's the fullback habit this time, Norris Banks. He's got the first down. Tackled by Jeff Delaney, the monster back in that pit defense, and Tom Perko. Well, this time Cromwell gives it to the first man through, Norris Banks. Notice how he sets the ball in there. That time he gave it. And the fullback actually doesn't know on most of these wishbone plays as to whether he's going to get the ball. It depends on whether Cromwell pulls it out or leaves it in. First and 10 for Kansas at the 35. Norris Banks, he got up to the 40-yard line, pick up about five or six yards, Tom Perko and Arnie Weatherington, the linebackers. 85, Lloyd Sobach checks in. You mentioned Weatherington, he had 86 tackles this year to lead Pittsburgh on defense, and he's always around the ball somewhere. Second three. Yeah, tackle a little Let the fullback have it. Norris Banks. He's close to first down. I think he got it. Cecil Johnson, junior from Miami. And Randy Holloway, a sophomore from Sharon, Pennsylvania, made the stop. But not until Banks got the first down. Kansas on the move at the 45. A capacity crowd here at the Sun Bowl. This stadium seats a little over 30,000. Couldn't find a ticket anywhere this year. A little mix up. Cromwell decides to keep it, picks up a couple. Picked up about three. We're going to call it second and seven. The interior, that Pittsburgh defense all on the stop. Al Romano. Well, he's a big, good looking dude, Johnny. He's a favorite with that Pittsburgh team. He's a junior from Solvay, New York, six foot three and 230 pounds. And he is active. Keep your eye on him. 91, Al Romano, head up the center. And that is a good matchup with John Martin. 
Cromwell on the option. Skip Sharp off the left side, stopped by James Wilson. Pickup of a couple. I'm going to bring up a third down situation. Well, that was a nice tackle, wasn't it, by Wilson? Real good one. He's a sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. Billy Campfield checks back in at offensive backfield for Kansas. So we've got a third and two for Nolan Cromwell. Double tight end situation. Lloyd Sobak checks in at his tight end. Cromwell keeps the football on the option. He's got the first down. Boy, he's quick. We watched him at practice all week long, and he runs so smooth, doesn't he, Johnny? He certainly does, and that time he had Bob Jury in a bind. Jury was out there to stop him. Cromwell is so quick, he runs a 9-700. He just turned up the field. His and best performance this year was against Oregon State. Cromwell picked up 294 yards on 28 carries. That's an NCAA record for a quarterback. He lets the fullback have it this time. Norris Banks stopped by Holloway. And the wishbone attack you're seeing it perform with Coach Bud Moore thinks he's the best wishbone quarterback he's ever seen. And uh, he's only played about eight or nine games. That's right. <laughs> That's uh, what you call fast progress. Skip Sharp checks back in in that offensive backfield for Kansas. Waddell Smith comes flanked to the left. Second and about four. There's the option on the right. Skip Sharp. Tackle by Dennis Moorhead. They got the first down. The Pittsburgh defense, if it is to be successful today, they must stop the quarterback. Cromwell is so dangerous on the option. And you talk about a split-second decision. He has to do that, and he made it. Just before he got clobbered, he pitched off. There was a good block by Bill Campfield that helped spring. He blocked the defensive end, and uh, it got Cromwell out there and enabled him to make that decision. Well, Vern Smith checks out now. Gives it to the first man through, Norris Banks, the fullback. Tackled by Cecil Johnson, defensive right end in that Pittsburgh defense. And Weatherington, the linebacker. You know, they, have, they still haven't thrown a pass, have they, Paul? No, Kansas? sir. They're going to stuff it right down your throat. If you're not going to stop this wishbone attack, you're going to see it just run, run, run all afternoon. How would you like to be a wide receiver? Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to be a wide receiver on this team. The pickup, let's call it four. Second six. Same play. Banks for another couple. Well, on that play, they didn't have uh, wide receivers. They brought in, uh, they had everybody in tight, like two tight ends. And they'll do that when they get down into deep into the other team's territory or even deep in their own territory. It, it, the purpose is to keep a defense honest. Pittsburgh's been doing a lot of stunning, a lot of moving around. When you bring those two tight ends in there, it keeps them honest. Double tight end situation for Kansas. Now Laverne Smith checks back in at left halfback. Cromwell on the option. He's got Campfield. Throws it to Campfield. I do not think he made it. Dennis Moorhead on a fine stop. Okay, here he goes with the fake of the fullback. Down the line. Watch 21, James Wilson. He does a good job. He plays Cromwell and then reacts and makes the first hit. He hits him high and Moorhead comes in to, to mop up, but it was a good defensive play by the Pittsburgh defense. They had a defense that time. Now well, they're going to measure it. We still have no score with 4.01 to go here in the first quarter from El Paso, Texas. Oh, it's close. It's close. You can see the referee, Harvey Murdoch, he says he got about three inches. Well, what do you do? Uh, if I'm but more, I think I'd go for it. Of course, I've always been a gambler, Johnny. You couldn't tell it by me. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. The first important decision here for the coaches, whether to go for it or bring in the field goal team. Dennis Kerbel, the regular field goal kicker, has a knee injury. So Bob Swift will do the field goal uh, kicking today. So they'll probably go for it here with their number one kicker off sideline. They'll do two or three things off this type of a situation. They have that little quick quarterback sneak by Cromwell because he's big and strong. And uh, also they have a pass to the tight end. Bud Moore now, his first really big decision of the game. We'll see what 
what he calls because they do send the plays in. Quarterback sneak with Cromwell keeping. First down for Kansas. He should, should have picked up two or three inches. Usually when you see a quarterback at least have some forward progress, they're going to, depending on where they mark it, of course. Pittsburgh's defense thinks Cromwell did not make it. Oh, look but at Bud Moore. Moore is up. It looked like from our vantage point, Johnny, that he did have it. Well, first big, big play of the ball game. Pittsburgh's defense holds. No score here in the first quarter. Johnny, he sure looked like he made the first down, and Bud Moore, I know, is a little bit hot on the sidelines with that call. Of course, it's a judgment call to forward progress. So we've got timeout on the field now with four minutes remaining in the first quarter. No score. Rural America, isolated, beyond the reach of city comforts. To make life easier, it took a new way to deliver LP gas, using special trucks to go where a city gas lines didn't. Who originated this gas delivery system that helped turn the harsh life into the good life? The same company that makes fine products for your car, the Phillips Petroleum Company. Surprise. Now coming in, green, red green. Green! Another red green. Hey, green! I ain't never played football with no legend. When you've got a well-known name, people expect a lot. We've got a beer named after the city that means beer, Old Milwaukee. It's a tough name to live up to, but Old Milwaukee beer tastes as great as its name. Green, Jack. Next they'll send in a kid named Gale Saves. Attention, please. Now coming in. Here's the replay on that. We really can't tell whether he made the first down. But he's up and over, and a whole bunch of Pittsburgh players were there, and it was very close. Uh, you need a microscope to really tell. So Pittsburgh has it first to 10, about their 17. Darson, oh, he swarmed under. Jim Emerson, first man to make the stop, a sophomore from Great Bend, Kansas. Tony Darson. Is that sleepy? He looks a little bit sleepy, doesn't he? Well, he's been walking around here since 6 o'clock this morning. He's going to get sleepy pretty soon, I'll tell you. She's not. Second and 10. Slot situation for Pittsburgh. Running backs, Elliott Walker and Tony Darson. Option. Darson has it. There's the speed. And what I was talking about earlier, he is a north-south runner. Tom Fitch making the stop in that Kansas secondary. Okay, you'll see what they did to Harry Murphy, number 57. He comes across the line of scrimmage there, and they get around him. There was no force from the safety, and then Dorsett just takes off, and as you say, he runs north-south, straight ahead, and he's finally brought down by Fitch. First Eight, down. 18-yard pickup by Tony Dorsett. First down, Pittsburgh at their own 34. There's your ground-level look at it. Play-action pass. Hey, good. Gets around the left side. He's got the quick feet. He got over the 40-yard line. Pickup of about five yards. Franklin King on the stop. A freshman from Pocatello, Idaho. Very, very good reaction by Hagut on that. There was a rush there. Terry Beeson was coming strong, and uh, he just sidestepped it and got away and took off. And Johnny Majors feels that's the advantage, Paul, of having Hagut in there. He's a little bit runner, better runner than... Uh, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh being a little bit better passer. Slot situation now. Clark comes flank to the bottom of your screen. Garden Jones, and he can fly in the slot. Option right. Haygood cannot get the ball away. He finally does to Elliott Walker. What a ladder, and he's going to break free. And a good block by number 51 enables Elliott Walker to go in for the score. 59 yards on the option. Elliott Walker goes in for Pittsburgh's touchdown. Mike Schaefer, a great block. And really got to give a lot of credit there. There was a rush across the line, and as Haygood is hit, 
he laterals off. A beautiful play by Robert Haygood. And then Walker gets around the horn and takes off. And there was blocking by everybody. He comes down. We'll watch number 51, Mike Schaefer. Good juke there by Walker. And here comes 51 Schaefer on his block. He takes Eric Franklin out of there and goes in for the touchdown. 59 yards for the score. Pittsburgh draws first blood. Carson Long to attempt the extra point. Larry Swider will hold. It's up his 87th extra point in his career. Carson Long makes Pittsburgh an early leader, seven to nothing here at the 41st annual Sun Bowl. My dentures were so dingy and yellow, I hardly opened my mouth. My wife called me old stone face because I hardly ever smiled. Then I started brushing with Denture Cream. Denture Cream has an anti-yellowing formula that gets rid of dingy yellow film. And now Denture Cream helps keep that yellow from coming back because it polishes better, better than ever. Having yellow dentures took away my smile. Denture Cream's anti-yellowing formula gave me back my smile. Nothing like Michelob, eh? Well, son. Here's to your new job. Uh, give me another week, Dad, then maybe I'll drink to that. Ah, you'll do fine. Let me have another. Why don't you have a bottle of Michelob? I mean, it's just as good as a draft. Oh, I'm sure it is, but Michelob on draft, well. Michelob is great whether it's on draft, in bottles, or in cans. No matter how you drink it, it's always an unexpected pleasure. Now I'll drink to that. So with two minutes and 11 seconds to go in the first quarter, there's a shot of Bud Moore, the Kansas head coach. And he's thinking about his offense right now. Let's move the football. And the one thing he said, Paul, you know, yesterday, day before, he said, we can't get behind because he realizes that with the wishbone and no passing attack, at least up until this point, that it's tough to catch up. So he doesn't want to get too far behind. Back. Carson Long, there's your kickoff man for Pittsburgh. Back deep on the Kansas kickoff return will be 24, Eric Franklin, and 23, Billy Campfield. This will be Eric Franklin. Oh, and again, they stopped inside the 15-yard line. Great coverage by Randy Rudershan. That's twice, Johnny. He has really got down quick on that kickoff. Well, he really hustles down there, and the ball's been going very high. It's getting down late. They don't even get a chance to set up their blocking. He can't even reach the wedge up there. And here comes Rudershan, comes in behind the wedge and makes the tackle, and Pittsburgh has really got it down as far as the kickoff team is concerned. And it looks like that great effort by Rudershan will be nullified preliminary indication is that Pittsburgh was offsides on the kickoff so they'll march Pittsburgh back five yards Carson Long will kick off at the 35 oh Johnny Majors 40 years old what a job he's done at Pittsburgh he took Iowa State to two bowl games from 1968 to 72 he joined Pittsburgh in 73 and turned them right around with their first winning season in 11 years Former great player, too. He sure was. He almost Tennessee. won the Heisman in 1956. You know who beat him out? Paul Horney. Paul Horney. I'll tell you one thing. They were 10-0 and 0 that year, and I guess everybody expected uh, Johnny Majors to win it. I was quite surprised myself at that selection, but Johnny Majors has really been a fantastic coach. He's one of the great young coaches in America. He's losing one of his top assistants, which will He sure is. We'll about. talk about that at halftime. Jackie Sherrill, the... One of the great coordinators in that Pittsburgh assistant coaching staff has just been named head coach of Washington State. So we'll be talking to him at halftime. So now Carson Long with the five-yard penalty will kick off from the 35. It'll be on the ground. It goes over everybody's head. Eric Franklin, two yards deep, but will run it out. Good coverage again by that Pittsburgh special team. So Kansas will put it in play first and 10 about their own 17 or 18 yard line. Dennis Wright now checks into that offensive backfield. 
he splits a lot of duty with Norris Banks in that fullback position. Wright, a junior from Mound City, Missouri. In fact, there's not too many seniors in this football game, Johnny. Two seniors in the starting lineup for Kansas offense. The option with Cromwell, covered beautifully by Jeff Delaney, the monster back. And James Wilson. And Pittsburgh defensed that one perfectly because they had Cromwell inside outside. Let's watch the coverage by the two defensive backs. There's the, there's the fake into Murphy. Now he has the pitch man, 23. Now you'll see Cromwell can't turn up because there's Delaney, and he can't pitch because he sees 21 Wilson out to the sideline. So there they've got him. Two on one, tough situation. Second and eight. He lets the fullback have it this time. Dennis Wright. Al Romano on the stop, the nose guard in the Pittsburgh defense. So we're going to have a third and three set up for Bud Moore. There's the head coach of Kansas again. Third and three. A split in left. Waddell Smith comes flank to the bottom of your screen. Roll out draw to Laverne Smith. Stopped by Al Romano. And he's going to be short of first down. So it's going to bring a punting situation up for the Kansas Jayhawks. So they need one yard to go, so they'll punt it. And they're moving into punt formation very quickly. John O'Rear will do the punting for Kansas. Garden Jones and Dennis Moorhead back deep for Pittsburgh. Whistle. Might be a little bit too much time. That's what it is. Delay a game penalty coming up against Kansas. That'll cost him five. It seems that O'Rear was a little bit confused. It's very seldom do you have the, the punter confused because you don't really have a snap signal. Uh, he couldn't have been asking for the count. So maybe you want to know, am I supposed to punt? I maybe know. he wanted, if, uh, he wanted <laughs> to run the football. <laughs> he played minor league baseball for four years. Four years. The Baltimore chain. So he's probably one of the nation's oldest freshmen. Right, right. Willie Taylor now back deep on Pittsburgh punt return. Not too long a kick. A fair catch is signaled for, and he was blocked down by number 65 in that Kansas team, John Morgan. So I think it's going to be a penalty against Kansas, interfering with the fair catch. Gordon Jones had signaled for a fair catch, Johnny. We'll wait to check out Harvey Murdoch's call. But Gordon Jones did sig signal for a fair catch. He was interfered with. And he was on John the move. Morgan. He was running forward quite a bit, and that may have confused Morgan. He may not have seen the fair catch signal. And since Jones was moving forward ver so quickly, uh, he may have thought he was going to return it. Uh, it's going to cost Kansas. And we've got a few seconds. Of, in fact, time may have run out on that punt, John. We were in the last couple of seconds of play in the first quarter here. So that's what it is. Interference with the fair catch signal. It's going to be a major infraction of 15 yards. The time on the scoreboard, it shows it has run out. So we're going to have to wait for the official time on the field. So Pittsburgh gets a big break here, leading 7 to nothing. So now they're going to take a timeout on the field. But when we come back, it's Pittsburgh 7 and Kansas nothing. I think that's the end of the first quarter. <laughs> Onion. Two old beef. We filled our big neck Two all beef patties. So just less of lettuce. I got a terrible memory, really. <laughs> Two old beef, beef patties. <laughs> all right. Special sauce. <laughs> lettuce. Uh, it's a sesame seed bun. <laughs> it's a meal in a I forgot lettuce and onion. Oh, lettuce and onion. <laughs> two all beef patties, special sauce and lettuce too. Cheese. Cheese, pickles, onions, and lots of sesame seeds for you. 
corn seed sesame uh, on onions, pickled cheese, lettuce sauce, special patties, beef all too. What was that? Twelve beef patties, special sauce, sesame, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun backwards. Because you deserve a big fat today. That's good. At McDonald's. <laughs> That's terrible. It's impossible. Well, Johnny, the clock, as we see it, has showed that time has run out in the first quarter. The referee has the official time on the field, so evidently we still have a few seconds to go in the first quarter. That 15-yard penalty gives Pittsburgh excellent field position at Kansas is 35. Willie Taylor, Willie Taylor, one of the flankers down, top of your screen. Play action, screen over here to Garden Jones. Split end screen, look at this move. He picked up about five. Rick Kovach on the stop, a linebacker for Kansas. And now, finally, we have the end of the first quarter. Officially now the end of the first quarter with Pittsburgh leading 7 to nothing and in control as we start the second quarter. The Jayhawks of Kansas. Well, Johnny Pittsburgh got a big break on that penalty interfering with the fair catch. Well, a couple of big games coming up. St. Louis at Los Angeles tomorrow. That should be a great one. 3.30 Eastern time. The Rams banged up, Johnny. And, of course, St. Louis should be at full strength for that one. And I don't think it's determined yet whether James Harris is going to start for the Rams. He's got that bad shoulder. If not, it will be the, the Polish rifle. Mr. Jaworski. Jaworski, he can throw it, too. Sunday, it's Dallas at Minnesota. That'll be a cool one up in Bloomington, Minnesota. The Cowboys, of course, would like nothing better to upset heavily favored Minnesota in that one. But Fran Tarkenham, what a year he's had. Broke all kind of records. And he leads the attack with Chuck Foreman, who I think is one of the greatest backs ever coming into the league. And let's don't forget this one, the NFC Championship. That'll be Sunday. The winners of those two games will meet January the 4th, 3.30 Eastern Time, NFC Championship. What do you like in those games, Johnny? Well, I kind of like Minnesota. I think it's going to be a little cold for Dallas. Uh, Minnesota, they don't use hand warmers, so they're pretty tough up there. And I think the Rams, uh, well, a lot of it depends on Harris and Jaworski. It's, a, it's St. Louis has got an explosive offense. The Rams are tough defense, so it'll be... It'll be a tough one, but I think the Rams will win it. Well, I, I have to disagree with you. I'm going to go with the St. Louis Cardinals in that one. I think they have too much offensive firepower, and the Rams are a little bit banged up. You got any money in your pocket? No, sir. <laughs> Second about four here for Pittsburgh. At Kansas is 30. The option. Elliot Walker again. And he's got the first down close to the 20-yard line, pushed out of bounds by Steve Taylor. Elliot Walker, coming into this football game this year, had picked up 780 yards on 150 carries. And he's still down on the sidelines. He may be injured. And that would be a big blow for Pittsburgh's offense. Number 93, Tom Dinkle for Kansas, almost stopped this play. Now you can watch the fake. Here comes Dinkle across. And he's blocked into the quarterback, but he gets the pitch out to Walker. And he's finally knocked out of bounds by Steve Taylor, and he's a punishing tackler, and uh, he's still down on the sidelines as play continues. Bob Hutton checks in for Pittsburgh in place of Walker. Option again. Carson. He's got the speed to go outside. A good move, gets him close to the five-yard line. Tom Fitz making the stop for Kansas. Touchdown, Tony Darson. Well, Hutton just came into the game number 44, but he throws a a good block here on O'Rear. He doesn't knock him down, but he keeps him out of the play. Number 17 did not get in the play as Dorset got around the horn and goes north-south, heads for the goal line all the way, and is finally brought down. But Pittsburgh is in position to take a commanding lead in this game, and Kansas would be in big trouble. That 11-yard pickup for Dorset. First down, first and goal for Pittsburgh. Walker back in the option. Dorset has it. He'll score. Tony Darcy scoring his 39th career touchdown. His 15th touchdown this year. Tony Darcy goes in from eight yards out. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Haygood runs that option 
pretty darn well. That time he passed off just at the right time on the option. Exact precise moment. That's Tony Darson on your screen. Getting now the watch Dinkle, 93, come across the line of scrimmage there. And just as he's ready to hit Haygood, he pitches out. There's the block by Walker. And in goes Dorset. Easy run, easy touchdown for TD Dorset. Carson Long will attempt the extra point. It's no good. It's going to be called wide to the right. So now with 14 minutes and 42 seconds to go in the first half of play for the 41st annual Sun Bowl. Pittsburgh has scored two touchdowns. They missed the extra point. They lead Kansas 13 to nothing. batteries last longer and all sorts of things, like these toy ducks. One is powered by Duracell, the regular carbon batteries. If you have kids, you know that in continuous use, most batteries wear out after just a few hours. But Duracell keeps going. In fact, depending on the toy, Duracell can last up to six times longer. Duracell. The copper top battery. No regular battery looks like it or lasts like it. Where would an 800-pound gorilla sit if he walked into your living room? Our special sense of humor. It's what's kept us young for almost 200 years. Grab a bottle of Coke and let's have a few laughs. So Carson Long will kick it off for Pittsburgh at the 40 on the right side of Ashmore. Back deep, Eric Franklin and Bill Campfield. This is a short kick. Eric Franklin lets it go. He's in trouble. The ball's free. Kansas very luckily gets it back. Ooh, another big break almost for Pittsburgh. Well, it was a very high kickoff, and there was confusion there. There's Re Ruderson going down the field, and what some players forget is that you can fair catch on a kickoff return, and that time they did not do it, and they were lucky they didn't lose possession of the ball. James Jackson, number 82, had a shot at it. Probably should have caught the football, Johnny, but he let it go. Of course, on this artificial surface, hit ball takes some crazy bounces. First and 10 for Kansas, and about their own 10. Takes it to Banks, there's the fumble. Cromwell very luckily got it back. Woo. Boy, I'll tell you what, we got to credit Randy Cousins with a, with a great play that time. He almost forced the real game breaker on that one as he came across the line of scrimmage and hit Cromwell as he was trying to pass off. Well, now we'll see if the wishbone offense of Bud Moore, as Johnny pointed out earlier in this football game, they have not thrown the football too much. Now they go into a slot situation. Can't build in the slot and call it split. Option right. Cromwell keeps it. Picked up about six yards on the play. Randy Holloway on the stop. And Tom Perko, the linebacker. There's Elliot Walker, who was shook up just briefly on the sidelines being worked on. So we've got a passing situation, but out of the wishbone, maybe not. Third about eight. There it comes rolling out to the left. Cromwell going on the run. Intended for Campfield. Billy Campfield incomplete. So John O'Rear will come in and punt it away for Kansas. Should give Pittsburgh excellent field position. The defense did the job. That's right. Cecil Johnson on that last play, he jumped up. He must have been eight feet high in the air, and he really came down on Cromwell as he got rid of the ball and, and distracted him quite a bit. Gordon Jones and Dennis Forehead back deep on the punt. John O'Rear takes it away from top of three or four yards. Jones, he's pushed back all the way to his 32-yard line. Good coverage in that Kansas defense. Jim Young, number 71, good coverage. So with 13-18 to go here in the first half of play. Pittsburgh leads Kansas 13 to nothing. That 
That was me 12 years ago, the king of the street. Thanks, king. Time's changed. Today, this is what I drive, Buick Skylark. It's V6-powered, comfortable, good-looking, and practical. And the one thing the old king of the street is an expert on these days is practicality. <laughs> Say hi, Moose. Buick, dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Ring in the holidays, ring out the year. Sparkling with Andre, love and good cheer. Take Andre home for the holidays, Andre for the holidays. What's a celebration without Andre champagne to lend sparkle and elegance? And Andre cold duck to keep things bubbling along. Greet the season and your friends with the best, Andre. For the holidays and all year long. Well, the CBS Sports Spectacular, Ken Norton against Pedro Lavelle. Well, Ken Norton, of course, the only one of the few guys to beat Muhammad Ali. In fact, he broke his jaw. The winner of this fight is expected to get a shot at Ali. That's Saturday, January the 10th, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Ken Norton, he wants a shot. There's Johnny Major, the head coach of Tennessee. I guess he feels pretty good about this time. Henry Lee Parker standing right alongside. Got a 13 to nothing lead. Pittsburgh has the ball in their own 32, first and 10. A good good quarterback. Reverse option. He keeps it. Got up past the 40 yard line. Tackled by Tom Fitch. Close to first down. He picked up about eight, so it's going to bring up a second and two. Flag was down. So that play will be nullified. Well, it was certainly a wide open play, too. He could, he could have turned up the field or he could have pitched out to his pitch man that time. Uh, either way, there were yards available. We did. So it's going to be a 15 yard penalty against Pittsburgh. It's going to move the ball back to about the 16 yard line. Will be Offensive holding yard against Pittsburgh. Well, right now, Bud Moore has to feel that that fourth down decision to go far deep in Pittsburgh territory with the score nothing to nothing Cromwell did not get the first down and that has been a turning point as far as Kansas is concerned first and ten little pitch to Darcy sweet fight some kind of running back over the 25 stopped by Tom Fitch while he followed his blockers well Johnny he's got the eyes to pick the hole well, he gets some help from his uh, teammate there, his running back teammate, Elliot Walker, 34. You can see the quarterback, Haygood, number 10, throw a block. Now, here's Walker, 34. You see him to the right of your screen. He gets O'Rear out of the play, and O'Rear misses the tackle because he was off balance. And Dorset, of course, you got to get a good shot at him and watch him spin out of it. 53 yards and six rushes. Second down. They need 15 for the first down. Haygood on the bootleg. Down the right side. He got five or six of them back, pushed out by Steve Taylor. And that's Bud Moore. Okay, now this was one of their few pass plays. The receiver ran a flag, but he was double covered, so Haygood, with his quick instinct, just decided he had to take off and run. He had good pass blocking there, and he'll pick up Dorset. Number 33 will help out on a block up here. There goes the block there by Dorset, which helps out before he's finally knocked out of bounds. Good ad-lib play by the Pitt Panthers. Third and four now for Haygood. About four and a half yards to be exact. Good leg. On a square out pattern, I think it's Garden Jones. He's got it. Covered by Steve Taylor. It should be enough for the first down. It is Pittsburgh moving the football. Play action pass. Watch the pass blocking. Nobody around. All the time in the world. You'll see the square out at the top right of your screen. And it was right on the money, right in the numbers. A perfect pattern and pass. Gordon Jones picks up the first down on a square out. Pittsburgh had a first and 25, and they very quickly made it. Ball at their own 47. Option left again. This is Darson. Good block by the tight end, Corbett, turning out the linebacker. Harry Murphy made the stop for Kansas. I tell you one thing that... 
I saw when I watched Notre Dame, the Notre Dame game, when Pittsburgh just was awesome on offense. Elliot Walker and the other remaining back, they blocked so well for Tony Darson. They dig that young man, number 33. They love the block for him. Pick up of about, let's call it seven, second and three. Option again, look at that quick pitch. Darson's going to have the first down and then some. Got down inside the 25-yard line, the quick feet of Tony Darson. Terry Beeson finally brought him down. Johnny, watch how quickly he makes his mind up when he cuts. He certainly does, and you'll see, watch Dinkle, 93. He clobbers Haygood, but it's too late. They put, they've been putting number 93, Tom Dinkle, in a bind. He picks up a couple of blocks, and then Dorsett just takes on down the field for another first down for the Pitt Panthers, and this game is definitely Pittsburgh all the way so far. Pick up a 21 yards for Tony Dorsett. We've got 11.22 to go still in the first half. Dorsett now 81 yards and eight rushes. That's an average of about 10 yards a pop. That's not too bad. He averaged 6.8 all year long. 228 carries for 1,554 yards. Bob Hutton now checks in for Elliott Walker. Give him a little break. First and 10. Hey, good at Ben Hughes. Hands it off to Bob Hutton. Elliot Walker, check that. Elliot Walker, straight ahead, great blocking. Tackle by John O'Rear and Matt Carroll and John Hanhauser. The left guard and the left tackle made some kind of block. Yes, and Pelusi helped out an awful lot, too. And, of course, Walker just took on down the field, and he's finally brought down by two Kansas defenders, but some great line blocking. Number 50, John Pelusi put on a crunching block, too, on a double team. Darson Walker, your running back. Option left. Darson, the trail man. He's got it. Flag is down. He got back almost to the line of scrimmage. John O'Rear and Tom Dinkle on the stop for Kansas. Let's check out the penalty. Preliminary indication is clipping against Pittsburgh. Let's see if we can pick up the clipping. Actually, Kansas did a good job of defending this play. O'Rear was in the right position. Now, Haygood pitches out. I don't see the clip there. They may have called it on the number 17 O'Rear who made the tackle. May have been clipped on the play. It's Could very have been the uh, other running back, Johnny, 34. I think it was Elliot Walker on an outside block. Kind of rolled behind one of the uh, defensive men for Kansas. And in any event, it's going to cost Pittsburgh 15. 15-yard penalty. It appears that O'Rear, 17, got clipped and also made the tackle at the same time. But, of course, the, the penalty will prevail. Look at this, Elliot Walker. Five rushes for 96 yards. You talk about averages. That's about, what, 19 or 20? I can't They've remember. got about 170 yards rushing already. Stars have picked up 81 yards. Walker, 96. I'd say that's a pretty good blend of them of a rushing attack, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mixed in with what Haygood has done, it's, uh, it's Haygood, very versatile. Haygood actually has been the key on that option. He has released the football. Carl Farmer now is the Pittsburgh. Willie Taylor goes in motion right. Haygood's going to throw it. Got all the time, and he can run. I think John House, Hanhauser was out in front. Haygood. Paul Markheim, a defensive tackle, made the stop for Kansas. Well, let's watch Haygood now. Off the play action, he goes back. His receivers are well covered, but when he takes off, he yells, go, 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 and watch 64. John Hanhauser, he hears the go, and he takes off, and he's down the field. That's pretty good for the left tackle, and he throws a block downfield at, at Murphy and is finally knocked out of bounds. Pick up of 11 yards for Haygood. It's going to bring up second, about three. Bob Hutt and Tony Darson now. That's Darson the trail. Haygood cuts up field on a good cut. Close to first down. Dennis Bologna. A freshman from Kansas City, Missouri. Actually, he was a freshman of the year in the Big 8. He is now playing nose guard in place of Jim Emerson. Well, they expect some high things out of him. A freshman, and he's playing a lot of ball for them. The 
correct myself, Johnny, I said it was third and almost had the first down. They need to put it in the end zone. Third and goal. Willie Taylor goes flank to the right. Carl Farmer to the left. Option left. He can throw it. Walker into the end zone. It's intended for Carl Farmer. Intercepted in the end zone by Andy Roost. So it's going to be a touchback. Kansas will have the football first and 10 at their own 20. Nine minutes and 15 seconds to go here in the first half. Pittsburgh, 13, Kansas, nothing. Pittsburgh, 13, Kansas, nothing. With 9.15 to go here in the first half of play, it'll be Kansas as football. First and 10 on their own 20. Billy Campfield, Norris Banks, and Laverne Smith. We haven't seen too much of Laverne Smith so far today against Missouri in the last game of the year. 15 carries, 236 yards rushing. Broke two for 67, 56 for touchdown. Hands off to Banks off the right side. Al Romano on the stop. He picked up about four. Laverne Smith, a great breakaway runner, picked up 834, 864 yards this year, and he has been held intact so far, Johnny. And he has over 2,000 yards. He may set a Kansas rushing record for a career before he's through. Out of the eye, the left tackle, Lindsey Mason, moves, so that's going to cost Kansas five yards, a legal procedure. Well, five-yard penalty will bring up second, about a 11. And we're going to see, I think, a lot more of Laverne Smith. He has 2,096 yards in his career. He has one more year. The Kansas record is 2,706, held by John Riggins, and then comes Gail Sayers. And Laverne Smith's going to be after that. Roll out, draw there, Smith. Almost got the first down. He's very close to it. 4-3 speed. I haven't heard too many football players, college pro, or anybody runs 4-3. Well, they said they tied him in 4-3, but the last five yards he cruised in. So uh, he is quick, and he has great acceleration. He has that quick speed for the first five yards, and that's what you need as a, as a scat back. Pick up of about 10 yards, going to bring up third and short. They need less than a yard for the first down. Out of the wishbone. Not well. He's got the first down. He broke a tackle from Randy Cousins, finally stopped by Arnie Weatherington. Johnny, when you're in the wishbone offense, keep in mind, uh, we've mentioned before, that they do not throw the football, they do not throw it well. They should not go away from their game plan. They're only behind by two touchdowns. They're going to try to run the football, do the things they do best. The only thing is, you've got to mix one in once in a while just to keep them on. So well, he will throw this one. He's got his man. Waddell Smith had his man beaten by a step, but what a rush. Randy Cousins. Boy, he came from the back side, and Cromwell didn't even see him. They did go for the pass this time. As Cousins gets through, there was a double team. There was a mistake on the blocking, and you'll see Cromwell. He'll clobber, be clobbered by Randy Cousins. Loss of seven yards on that play. Call it second about 16. Out of the eye. Burn Smith, your deep back. Roll out draw again. Smith trying to cut back. Got past the 30-yard line. Pick up about four and a half yards. Al Romano made the stop for Pittsburgh. Third and 11. Well, I would imagine this is a passing... <laughs> Well, this is definitely a passing situation, baby. <laughs> I'm not going to bet on it, though. Jim Michaels goes flank to the left. Canfield's in the slot. Instead, they hand it right off to Norris Banks. He needed 11. He got about four. So Kansas will have to punt it away. Bob Swift. We'll now do the punting for Kansas. He also will do the kickoffs and the field goals today. He has a shot. Dennis Moorhead and Garden Jones back for Pittsburgh.
Good kick. Jones at the 23. He can fly. He almost breaks it. He gets stopped at the 35-yard line. There is a flag down back at Pittsburgh's 27-yard line. Garden Jones on a great return. Well, they had the wall formed on the right sideline, Johnny. He almost broke it. Well, I'll tell you what, he's a high stepper. Boy, he got out there and ran on his heels like the Stallions do. We had a clipping call, probably. That's going to nullify a great return by Garden Jones. He ranked sixth in the NCAA this year, statistics on punt returns. There it is, a major infraction. There's the clip you saw just at the beginning of it. You can see the clip there. Mike Balzer is the one who committed the clip. You can see him coming across the field. And there is the pushing from the back. Look Mike at that Balzer. wall. Look and at the that wall. The wall was really beautiful. formed, just a V, almost like a V. And it was just a beautiful setup. But uh, You will not see a better shot of a wall on a punt return. Uh, that's the best shot I've ever seen. The only thing really is, is, they had a couple of men way outside the wall. First and ten. Straight handoff. He breaks it free. Elliot Walker. Flags are down again. Elliot Walker trying to get to the outside. Finally pulled down short of Kansas' 30-yard line. Steve Taylor pulled him down. They didn't waste any time. This is going to be called back, it looks like. Oh, that left side of that Pittsburgh offensive line really opening up some gaping holes. Now you just see the quick handoff in there, and he gets through the hole, and it was a trap on that play. Doesn't even have to break a tackle. It was so wide open, you could run a tank through it. And he's finally brought down by Steve Taylor. Steve Taylor's got a lot of speed, and Walker had to make his dip. Boy, what would that have done for his average had that play held up? Finally, Steve Taylor collars him and brings him down, but we do have the penalty, and two big, long plays for the Pitt Panthers have been called back by penalties. That was a 50-yard run by Elliot Walker. Of course, it's nullified. Five yards back. So Pittsburgh will have it first and 15 at the seven-yard line. Same play. Tony Darcet. Rick Kovach on the stop. Same play. Big hole as Dorset gets through there. And you see Kovacs coming from the right side to make the tackle and stop Dorsey, but not before he gains four, five, six yards. And they're going up the middle quite a bit. The outside is going to be open again if they continue with that kind of success. Pick up a nine yards for Tony Dorsey. Second about six. First option, Dorsey fake. Now he hands it to him. It's out of, knocked out of bounds. About Tony Dorsey got the pitch out. Eddie Lewis pushing Tony Darsett out of bounds. Did you notice the quick feet on uh, Haygood on that play? He's just got that, he runs like a halfback. And when you have somebody like that uh, at the quarterback spot, it uh, really enhances your offense. Tony Dorsett now has 96 yards and 10 rushes. That's a 9.6 average. And I'm sure he'll take that any day. Third about a yard. Dorsett, Bob Hutton, your backs. That's Bob Hagan. He's done an outstanding job here in the first half 90, so far. 90, 90. Yeah. He may be stopped short. Stop cold. Tom Dinkle and Mike Butler on the stop. Darcy will be short of the first down, so Pittsburgh will have to punt. The second punt of the day for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Larry Swider will kick it away, averaging 41.3. And Johnny here's a little bit dangerous now. The Kansas deep man on the returners looking right or looking right into the sun. Eric Franklin, one of the men back, is kind of off to the side of his foot. Franklin makes the catch short of the 50-yard line and will go down immediately. So far today in the first half of play with 4.04 to go, 
Pittsburgh is the only one to get into the end zone. They lead it 13 to zip. Coming up next on CBS, the Fiesta Bowl. Nebraska, it's Arizona State. Pat Summerall and Tom Brookshire will be there to bring you that one. That should be another great one. Kansas takes over first and ten. A fumble. Tried to hand off to Banks and Pittsburgh have, has it. I think it was Randy Holloway. Norris Banks. A little mix up on the handoff from Nolan Cromwell. And here comes Cousins. I'll tell you what, that was a scramble. He didn't even get a chance to get the ball off, did he? Didn't even get the handoff off. Uh, Kansas having their problems on offense so far to get today with 3.59 to go here in the first half. Pittsburgh on the turnover. Slot situation right. Hager, the quarterback. Option right. Cuts up. Oh, he does have the quick feet. Got inside the 45-yard line. Tom Dinkle on the stop for Kansas. He's really been the key to this Pittsburgh offense today. That's the young man, number 10. Bob Haygood from Youngstown, Ohio. Pick up about eight yards. Let's call it second and two. Pitch to Darcy. Got close to the 40-yard line, depending on where they mark it. Tackle by Terry Beeson. Darcy is from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. They're going to have to measure for this one. Johnny, you know, when Majors first went to Pitt in 1973, the first thing he did, he was a senior at Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Darsett, he went after him, and he said, this is the guy I need to turn it around, and he sure has. Well, I'll tell you, you rushed for over 1,000 yards, well over 1,000 yards for three years. He has a shot, actually, of breaking Archie Griffin's career record. He has over 4,000 yards going in after three years. Archie Griffin, I think, had 5,100 Oh, he should definitely break it. With, course, Barring injury. He does injury. not get hurt. That's his only problem. He's the first junior ever to get to the 4,000-yard mark. He only needs 1,341 yards next season to become the all-time leading rusher in NCAA history. Dorset got the first down. First and 10 kick. Kansas is 40. He's going to the air. Pointing out his receiver he wanted to make Rodney Clark hook up in the open zone Johnny he's got plenty of time to throw the football so far Kansas's front five have has not put any pressure on Haygood uh, Haygood showed a lot of poise there to be able as a college quarterback to stand in there and start pointing and telling the receiver what to do uh, that's poise and uh, Haygood uh, has turned out to be at least to this point the major decision of Johnny Majors that has been correct. Second ten. Hey, good. Trying to set up a screen on the left side. He got outside Mike Butler. And he got almost to the 35-yard line. Stopped by Terry Beeson. We really haven't seen that much from Mike Butler so far, number 77, but he'll come from the outside, and you can watch Hey, good. He just didn't have time to get the ball off. He got around Butler and then took off with his running ability and uh, wound up getting himself a few yards. He got five to be exact, Johnny. Third and five. Clark from flank to the bottom of your screen. Option left. Takes it to Dorset and got the first down. Hey, good running the option beautifully. Paul Van Son made the stop, one of the few seniors in that Kansas defense. In fact, Johnny, if you don't think this team is young, there's one senior starting on that Pittsburgh offensive team, three seniors starting on Kansas' first team defense. There's only three seniors starting on Pittsburgh's defense, and only two seniors starting on Kansas' offense. So we only have nine seniors starting this football game. Both teams very young. A draw to Tony Darson. He lose one tackle. Just saw a good picture of why that young man has been an All-American for three years. 
Now you see an example of the acceleration. Now here on the draw play. And now watch Dorset take off. Beeson will come, number 78, the linebacker, but he misses the tackle as we talk about eyes, and Dorset has the eyes. Did you notice him dip just as Beeson made his charge? He has 106 yards rushing. Second down. Dorset. Tom Dinkle made, making a stop for Kansas. They needed about two yards. I think he got it. Tony Dorsett will get the first down. Pittsburgh driving for the third touchdown with one minute and 22 seconds left. First and 10 for the Panthers at the 16-yard line. You can see they're sending in the plays from the sidelines. They signal in a lot of their plays. Both teams do. Defenses and offenses. Kansas will send in with a receiver to bring in the play. Haygood takes the signal from the sidelines. Bob Hutton checks in for Elliott Walker, fullback. Hey, good. On a square out pattern. Complete. To Rodney Clark, the split end. Steve Taylor just not caught off balance, saving the touchdown. So Pittsburgh will take a timeout now with 49 seconds still remaining on the clock. The ball will be spotted at the six-yard line. Well, it was a man-for-man -man situation for Rodney Clark there. He's the only senior on the offense of, of Pittsburgh. That time he just ran out and ran the, the old out pattern, uh, kind of a short out. He had a man-for-man -man situation, and uh, as they say in the old vernacular, so easy pickings that time. The challenge of the sexes on the CBS Sports Spec, Von Gulagong, Ilya Nastasi. Well, that should be some kind of match, of course. Uh, who do, you, who do you like in that one, Johnny? Well, I don't know. I would imagine Nastasi was watching Gulagong too, maybe in another way, rather than on the tennis court, if you know Nastasi. This should be a good one. Saturday, January the 10th, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. I wonder what he'll do if, if uh, Yvonne beats him. He might storm off the court. <laughs> so we got 49 seconds to go here in the first half. Pittsburgh driving for their third touchdown. It's going to be spotted just about between the six and seven yard lines. There's Haygood talking to Johnny Majors, a 40 year head coach, 40 year old head coach of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh might have a problem holding on to him as a head coach in the next couple of years. I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of job offers thrown his way. Actually, the, the future is so bright for Pittsburgh. We talk about all the underclassmen that they're playing. They still ended up 7-4. The same thing applies to Kansas. These, te these teams are really right. at the beginning. Next year is going to be a much better year for both teams. The only senior starting for Pittsburgh's offense is Rodney Clark, the flanker. And as Tyus and Segrin is on that same show with the CBS Sports Spec, the Challenge of the Sexes, Saturday, January the 10th, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, that's a track and field matchup. Huh? That's right, Bob Segrin. And Wyoming Tyus. That's Seager, and I worked with Bob down in Florida a couple of months ago, and he is in some kind of shape, believe me. So Pittsburgh will await the referee here to put the ball in play. They need about a half a yard for the first down and about seven yards for the touchdown. It'll be second down. 49 seconds left to play and two timeouts left. Isn't that a beautiful, there's no grass on the mountains here, but they're still beautiful. It's, uh, the weather is so pure around here. I mean, you can breathe well, right, Paul? Well, you're from Chicago, you don't know about that breathing, right? <laughs> it's a little bit different down here, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you, there's nothing greater than the city of Chicago. Right? All right, Johnny. It's got everything. I'll tell you one thing, you can see right down there, this place has a few things going for itself. They just announced uh, Lee Trevino about five minutes ago. You got a big roar from the crowd. He really is a favorite down here in El Paso. We're awaiting play now to resume. 49 seconds on the clock. There is the patrolman. You know, a couple of years ago around here, that they used to let the, the people go right, up the there. The people were all over the mountains watching this football game. But